Thank you so much, Marcus and Joni. You know, yesterday I went before the Lord in prayer and I just felt the Lord speak to me so clearly, just dropped in my spirit exactly what I was supposed to speak to you today. And whenever it happens like that, so suddenly and so clearly, I know that it's not just a, a good message, it's a word for somebody. Maybe for many people that are watching right now, the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. He wants to say something to your heart. He wants to give you a word that will bring a divine inflection point into your life. So I want to just caution you. Be careful that you don't allow the enemy to distract you because he'd love to do that. He'd love to take your attention away from what God is going to speak to you right now. But he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. I want to talk today about a passage of Scripture that many people seem to just pass over because it's one of the hard sayings of Jesus. I think it's one of those verses that many people just simply don't understand. It's found in the book of Luke chapter 9, verse 59. The Bible says that Jesus called a young man to follow him. It says, verse 59, he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. I want to talk to you today about the call of God on your life. We've been talking earlier about discovering God's will for your life. And I believe that today the Lord is speaking to many of you watching. And he has a purpose and a plan and a destiny for you to fulfill. But in order for you to fulfill it, you have to respond to the call of God. That's right. Discovering God's will is not enough. You actually have to take action and you have to obey. I have to admit that for many years when I read Luke 9:59 and this scripture where Jesus turned to this young man and said, let the dead bury the dead, but you go and preach the gospel, I said, Lord, I said, why were you so impatient with that young man? I mean, after all, how many of us wouldn't do the same thing if we were in a similar position? The young man wasn't negative. He didn't say, no, Lord, I won't go and preach the gospel. No, Lord, I won't follow you. Actually, he was quite positive. He said, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first... Let me go and bury my father. How many of us, if we had some great ministry opportunity, wouldn't say, yes, I want to take advantage of it, but first let me go to my father's funeral? It was perplexing to me. And in my heart, I really felt like the Lord had been unfair to that young man. And so one day as I was reading the scriptures, I decided just to ask the author. You know, those of us who are believers, the Bible is an amazing interactive book because we have the author they're with us all the time. And anytime we have a question, we can just ask him. You know, it's like one of those movie DVDs where they have the, the, the director's commentary going on in the background, and you can hear what the director or the producer was thinking as they created it. My friend, you have the producer, you have the director, the Holy Spirit of God. They're with you every time you read the scriptures. And anytime you run into something you don't understand, you can ask him. And so I said, Lord, I said, I have to be honest with you. I don't understand. Why were you so impatient with that young man? Why didn't you allow him one extra day to go and bury his dead father? And then the Lord spoke to me so clearly, so clearly. He answered my question with another question. This is what he said. What makes you think that that young man's father was dead? And suddenly it hit me like a, like a download of revelation. Suddenly. I understood what was happening here. The scripture doesn't say that his father had died. It just says that he wanted to put off obedience to the call of God until a more convenient time. Maybe the father was old. Maybe he was sick. This young man thought, surely it will be more convenient to follow Jesus after I've had a chance to bury my father. After this season of life is over, there will be a better time. After all, Jesus is still young. He's only 30 years old. Surely he still has another 30 years of ministry. I can catch up with him later. I can be one of his disciples later. But little did this young man know that the ministry of Jesus would only last for another three years, that he would go to the cross. And this opportunity of a lifetime to walk with the master, to work with the master, to be one of his disciples would be lost forever. My friend, this young man had no idea how precious, how rare, and how fleeting this opportunity was. He missed his opportunity of a lifetime because of two very costly words, but first, but first. Leonard Ravenhill said this, the opportunity of a lifetime 
must be seized during the lifetime of the opportunity. And when I read the story with this new perspective, suddenly I see what so many of us do. The Lord comes to us, maybe in our childhood, maybe in our youth, as he came to me, and he says, follow me. And we say, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me graduate from college and get an education. So we do that, we graduate. The Lord comes to us again and says, follow me. We say, yes, Lord, I, I will follow you, but first let me get a job and save up some money so I have something to fall back on. So we do that, we get a job, we save up some money, and then the Lord comes to us again and says, follow me. And we say, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me start a family. We start a family. We have a wife, a couple of kids, a house with a white picket fence and a dog. Everything just the way we imagined it. And then the Lord comes to us again. And he says, follow me. And we say, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but let me put my kids through school. But first, let me get my retirement pension. But first, but first, but first. My friends, the sad reality is that many of us never follow the call of God in our lives. The days go by quicker than we expected. One day they lower our stiff, cold bodies in the ground, and we never fulfilled the purpose that God had for our lives. My friend, let me tell you something today, what the Lord is speaking to you. There will never be a more convenient time to follow the Lord than when he calls you. The greatest tragedy in the world, my friends, is a wasted life. And real life in its, in its fullest sense is not just having a heart that's beating and lungs that are breathing. Real life is to do the will of God. Now, that young man, he might have ended up being disciple number 13. His name might be one of the names written on one of the foundations in the New Jerusalem. He might have a book of the Bible named after him, but today we don't know his name. All we know is of his epic missed opportunity. Now, I want to draw a contrast. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 18, we read the difference between this young man's response to the call of God and the response of those who actually fo followed him. In Matthew 4, 18, it says, As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew's brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately, they left their boat and their father and followed him. I love the way Luke describes the same event in his gospel. In Luke 5, 11, it says that when they brought their ships to the land, they forsook all and followed him. You know, something stirs inside of me when I read those words. When I read how those men followed Jesus, something inside of me makes me want to jump up and to follow them, to abandon everything and to follow the Lamb of God wherever he goes. You know, there are many people that are in hell right now. They miss salvation, not because they rejected it, but because the devil convinced them to wait until a more convenient time. The devil convinced them that there was plenty of time my friend, have you ever heard the scripture verse that says, today is the day of salvation? Well, actually, no, you've, you've never heard that. There's no such scripture in the whole Bible. The Bible never says today is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 actually says, now is the time of salvation. Today is not urgent enough. The time is now. When Jesus calls you, it's not a matter of you deciding when it's going to be the best time. Yes, Lord, let me get back to you later on today, my friend. If Jesus is calling you now, you need to respond to him now. I sense there's somebody watching this television show. The Lord has been calling to you for many years. But my friend, listen to me. That voice that calls you today will not always call you. Some of you need to drop off of your couch right now and get down on your knees and call out and cry out on the name of the Lord for salvation. There are some of us that have been called into the, into the ministry. And I want to speak especially to those that are called into the evangelistic ministry because, you know, Jesus here was talking to a young man who he called to preach the gospel. And he said, let the dead bury the dead. You know, if you were one of the world's finest surgeons and you had uh, a medical bag filled with medicine that could cure some incurable disease, and here you were on your way to the hospital to save lives, people that were dying in their hospital beds, and on the side of the road were dead bodies. Somebody called out to you and said, help me come and bury these dead bodies. You'd say, no, 
I don't have time to bury the bodies. I have to go and save some lives. My friend, for those of us that are called to preach the gospel, it is the most urgent of all mandates. We have the answer for the problems of the world. We have the answer for the lost and for the sick and for the dying. And we must leave the good things to other people. We must concentrate on the most important thing, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, the gospel, Paul said, did, he said, my gospel, my preaching didn't come with to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with a demonstration of power. When the gospel comes, it doesn't just come as a bunch of flowery words. It doesn't just come as an alternative lifestyle. The gospel comes as a package with power. And everything that you need is inside of that package. I'm asking for Marcus to come and join me now on the set because we're going to pray for you. And no matter what you need, whether it's physical healing, maybe it's financial provision, maybe it's salvation for yourself or for one of your loved ones, Maybe it's emotional needs. Maybe it's mental needs. Whatever it is that you need, I'm telling you the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer. Jesus has the power to change your situation. Those of you that have called in, you've sent in your prayer requests, we're going to pray for those prayer requests. And I believe that the Lord is going to reach out his hand to you and meet you. You know, Marcus, one of the things that just happened a couple of weeks ago at the crusade, a woman came for prayer for her husband. He had a terrible skin disease. And I prayed for this woman, and the next day I heard the testimony that he had been healed. But this is what I didn't know, that he was in America while we were in Africa. Wow. But Jesus, in Africa, touched his, her husband in America. Yes. And I'm telling you, we've been talking about interactive Fabulous. books, but the Holy Spirit, the gospel is the original interactive message. There is no distance, time, or space with him. He will touch you right now. Well, he really will, and that's why you need to call. That's why you need to go to daystar.com and click on prayer and get your prayer request in. There's still time. And Daniel is going to lay his hands on these prayer requests. Let's show the book again. I want to encourage you to get it. Live before you die. How do you find God's plan, God's purpose, God's will for your life? And you'll love the interactive QR codes that are in there. You put your smartphone up there and you watch videos that were produced especially for what you're talking about. And, the, and don't forget to watch... Thursday nights, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Daystar. And there's an event coming up. Daniel, why don't you give everybody an invitation to that event? Yes, we're going to be in Vero Beach, Florida. Uh, the information is there on your screen. In Vero Beach, Evangelist Bonke and I, and we're going to do a crusade just like we do them in Africa. We're going to do it right okay, there in the United States. Okay, this will be funny. Can you imitate Reinhard? I would never even try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I might have put him on the spot there just a little bit by doing that. Yeah. You know, Michael Koulianis is in the audience. Michael, would you come over here and join us for this final prayer as well? The Bible says, where two or three yes. are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So we're going to have the two or three. Amen. The two and, well, the, the three that are, that are going to be here. Daniel, would you lead us in this prayer? And Michael and I will lay hands on them as well. Lord, we send your power by faith in the name of Jesus yes, oh Christ God. to every one of these requests right now. Lord, I just pray over every sick body and I command Heal the sickness people, to come out of your body right now in Jesus' name. Cancer, Hold come out right now in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, pain, come out right now. Someone's being healed of asthma. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those that have financial problems. Lord, as they are faithful to sow into your work and to obey your word, Lord, I pray that you would provide for every need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray for every lost loved one that you would save them. Lord, for that man or that woman that's calling on your name right now, Lord, I pray for salvation for them in Jesus' name. Lord, wash them from their sins. Set them on a new course. Give them a new life today, I pray in Jesus' name. And Lord, for that man or woman who desires to follow that call of God upon their life, Lord, I pray that you would lead them and guide them. May they hear that voice from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Give them direction and light on their path. In Jesus' name, amen.